get to moving. Hey, guys. So you have to tell me what happened when I wasn't here. Give me the update while I'm loading this up on Thursday. Not much. Not much? You had the big challenge. Wasn't it challenging? What was challenging? Didn't you have a challenge? Weren't you going to have a challenge? No. You didn't have a challenge? Okay. Yeah, there was, there was a challenge, but Nick and Morgan were unable to make the class, and Colin made it through a portion of the class. So okay. we have it um, We have it uh, record, recorded to you, the two of them. And, and I think you also have the link that you're going to send me, right, so that they can take the class they could take the, the, the questions. Is that right, Ann? I think she has the actual link. Sure. So we'll send it across to you, and um, you can listen to the recording. I'd love to. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. Well, tonight Very what we good. have is just a bunch of uh, quick routes that we're going to hit with some questions, and we're going to see how we do, because we're getting terribly close to the end. We've, we better be ready. So... We're going to start with quid pro quo. Um, that was one of our Latin phrases from before. Um, who remembers what it means, quid pro quo? Quid pro quo? Yeah, quid pro quo. Mm. You hear it on the news sometimes. It literally means well, this. Um, oh, this yeah, go ahead. Say it again. This for that. Yeah, this for that. Um, as implied that you're making some type of, of exchange of uh, of services, perhaps sometimes it's used in kind of an um, uh, unethical way to trade one service for another as well. So um, well, let's go take a look and see what kind of words we've got for tonight. Okay. Everybody should know this one. I think you guys know the word DeFi, um, but you probably didn't realize it was related to the word FIDE, uh, faith or trust, that we saw before, and the adjectival form of that in Latin is fetus, which means faithful. So to defy something or someone is to turn away your trust from their trust or faith. So um, you're... you're renouncing your faith in that uh, person or in that institution. Um, what's something that you defy? Hmm. Oh, don't tell me. You, you never defy anything. Come on now. Uh, Morgan, how about you? Uh, something someone defies. Maybe somebody who, like, lied to them. Yeah. Yeah, like give me a, a, a brief example of that. Like somebody lies to you, and so what do you do? So you like don't trust more. Yeah, like, you like you turn you kind of turn away from that person. Nick, what about you? What's something that someone that someone might defy? Social conventions. Social conventions, very. Yeah. Um, what will pass for a top, top, a lady's top in New York City defies social conventions, I'm just saying. I've seen some stuff that will traumatize you. Colin, what's something that people defy? Authority. Pardon? Authority. Authority, yes. You'll defy whatever authority you have over you. Uh, teachers, parents, uh, the law your boss. Um, sometimes that's just in people's nature, I think, to be rebellious. Uh, at least it's in human nature to be rebellious and to try to defy people who are telling you what to do. Very good. All right. Comments or questions? Mm -hmm. no, no, I didn't think so. This word is one that you know. So, But you, you probably will see this word on your SAT. I bet you will. All right. Inveterate. Okay, this word confuses people <laughs> because when you first see it, a lot of people think it has something to do with being 
like invertebrate. What's an invertebrate? It looks like that word, but it has nothing to do with it. I got this. Yeah, I got with it. What is it? Something with no spine. Yeah. It it looks like that. It's not that. So don't let it confuse you. It comes from the Latin word that oh, means to what uh, it was. What? I thought you were asking what invertebrate was. I did. I was because as soon as people, I'm just speaking from my personal experience. When my students see this word, that's what they think. So I'm like, let's get that one out of the way right away. That's not what it means. I've seen it happen before. They're like, oh, invertebrate, inveterate. That's like jellyfish. No, <laughs> inveterate means um, something that someone does over and over and over habitually that it's kind of become a part of their personality. Um, it comes from the word that means to be old um, or to make old, because if you've been doing something for a long time, it, it's a, a part of your longstanding habit. It's become old inside of you. So um, some people, I used to be one of them, used to be an inveterate smoker. I smoked for a very long time, and then 13 years ago, I just quit. Um, some people are inveterate gamblers or inveterate drinkers. They've been doing it for so long that it's difficult for them to break from it. It's something that's part of you for a long time. Usually habitual. I like that word habitual. Let me write that up there. Can you guys see my, my writing? When I write it up there? Y'all see habitual? I just typed it. Yes, no, maybe. I see some visual. Very good. So um, it just means a, a, a habitual action, something that someone's done for a long time, for a long time. All right, let's take a look. Our next one is a question. It's always best if we can get straight to our question. Okay, and, and it's one of our favorites, the fill in the blank. Choose. Use the word for the best. The valley stage of the bright, seemingly weightless, weightless world where gravity is continually being blanked by the dancer. You guys have 54 seconds. Send me your answers. Thanks, Nick. Oh. Thanks, Colin. All right. This one was apparently too easy for you guys. Everyone guessed the same answer. Um, so let's pick someone to explain why they picked the answer they did. Colin, what answer did you pick and why? Well, it says seemingly weightless, and then mm -hmm. gravity, is, if it's weightless, mm -hmm. gravity is continually being defined because weightless and gravity are opposite. Very good, because if you're um, weightless, it's the opposite of gravity. So you must be, um, you know, you must be defying gravity. Very good. All of you got that one. I don't even think we need to go through. Um, I don't think we need to go through the other choices unless you guys have a question about any of them. No. no. Red, 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 red. Yeah, I didn't think that. This is too easy for you guys. All right, let's take a look at the next word. Oh, oh preclude. This is a great word. It comes from the word cloudo, which means to close, just like claustrophobia comes from that, the fear of being closed in. But if you preclude something, then it comes from pre, which means before. It means you close it or you shut it beforehand. So if you preclude someone from doing something, then you're basically closing the door in their face before they have a chance you're to do it. Before they do it. Yeah, you're shutting them out before they have a chance. Um, you know, often I'll do that in class. I'll preclude any type of misbehavior by getting the kids actively involved in something else. And so, you know, we'll be playing a game or whatever, and that will preclude them, you know, running around the room or talking or whatever. Uh, shuts the door on their in their face before they do. 
Um, can anybody use this word in a sentence? How about Morgan? Preclude? I see your hand, Nick. We'll come to you second. Hmm. Um, I, I precluded the team before they um, chanted through cheers. It, it kind of cracked up there a little bit at the end. Can you say the last little phrase again? Um, I said I precluded the team before they chanted rude cheers. Very good. So you precluded their rude interruption, right? How did, yeah, by doing that. Nick, go ahead and give me yours as well. Um, there a recent sci-fi, or a re, some semi-recent sci-fi movie talked about um, how the police force used a computer to preclude people from doing crime. Oh, very good. To, uh, and what movie was that? I don't remember what it was called. But I remember they had a machine that could predict um, the future, and it told when people were going to commit crime. Minority Report. Minority Report yeah. is what it was. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Come on. Absolutely. That's a perfect example. The machine would predict when someone was going to murder someone, and they would go and prevent it. They would preclude the act of murder by arresting the person before they could commit it, which you know, is pretty cool. Good movie. Um, Colin, do you have anything you want to add or a sentence that you'd like to demonstrate with this word? Okay, I'll get you on the next one. I'll get you on the next one. All right, preclude. Next. Although Paul Bowles wrote many, I assume that's how you pronounce the name, wrote many musical pieces during his prolific career, his work as a composer was ultimately blank, his writing, for which he received the most acclaim. Oh, this one's tricky. Read it carefully. Send me your answers. You have a minute. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Colin. Morgan, you got about 10 seconds before you're going to run out of time. You have to move on in those 54 seconds to the next question. Okay, everybody's answers. All right, um, I think the key word here is going to be, what do you think is the key word in this sentence? It gives you a clue as to what type of answer you're going to see. Colin, I said I'd come back to you. Look at this sentence. I think there's one word in here that gives you a real clue as to the type of word you're looking for. What, do you, what is it? Colin? Um, is it Colin? Um, uh, uh, say that again, a claim? Yeah. Well, that is important because we're talking about um, his writing is receiving the acclaim, which comes from the Latin word that means to shout out, right? So it's like receiving the most cheer. But I think there's an even uh, another word that, that's even more kind of telling. And so... Um, Morgan or Nick, which word do you think is the most important clue as to what type of answer we're looking for? Oh, come on. Look at the first word in the sentence. Although. Although. So we know that the first part is talking about something, but that the second part is going to have a different expectation. So when we're reading about his many musical pieces during his prolific career, mm -hmm. um, we'd be thinking, wow, well, he must have gotten a lot of praise for that. But the keyword, although, lets us know that that's not going to be the case. So we're looking for something that shows that his writing is what got him all of the 
uh, praise and acclaim. And so if that's the case, then uh, Colin, what's the answer? Um, I said C overshadowed by. Yeah, that's very good. Because what that means is that his writing got more attention than his music, even though he did write many pieces that all of those kind of clues you in. That you might expect one thing, but you're not getting that expectation. His writing overshadowed his popularity with his music. Comments? Questions? Mm, no, that's pretty good. I thought it was pretty clear. All righty then. On we go. Oh, yay. Arachnid. What's an arachnid, Morgan? Uh, a type of item. Yeah. Any creature with eight legs. Okay. It's an arachnid. Um, uh -huh. Do you... Do you know, um, Morgan, do you know the myth of Arachne? I don't. Okay. Um, who is familiar with the myth of Arachne and Athena? <gasps> no one? This is so Wait. exciting. Wait, ask that again. Who, is anyone familiar with the myth of Arachne and Athena? Arachne was a girl, yeah, according to the myth. What happened? Um, she challenged Athena to a weaving contest because she believed she was the greatest weaver in all the land. Including so, better than Athena, which was kind of obnoxious, yeah. And then? She challenged Athena and won, and Athena turned her into a spider in <laughs> Yeah, she actually did make a better weaving uh, woven piece than Athena did and it made Athena so mad <laughs> that she turned her into a spider so that she would continue to weave and spin for all eternity as a spider. Um, and that's where the word arachnid comes from. It's from the name of this, allegedly from the name of this girl. Uh, but it comes from the Greek word for spider. The Latin word is arania or arania, depending on uh, the gender, uh, which means spider. Anybody have Arachnophobia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. Uh, terrified of, of any animal that has more than the correct number of legs. Four legs is okay. More than four, too many legs. So oh, six, five. five is bad. Six is bad. Eight is the worst. And then, of course, there's like a millipede. That's even worse. So since you're an arachnophobic or an arachnophobe, Nick, don't look at the next picture. Oh, no, wait. I thought a picture was next. We'll go to the next one. Here, I'll go ahead and go to the picture. Ah! Um, yeah. I don't know. Okay. All right. Here's one of the ones where you have to find the correction if, or the error if there is one and make the correction. Unlike her sister, Heather, who would always put arach arachnids, there should be an S there, safely outside if she found them in the house. Joanna's fear kept her from going anywhere near the creatures. I'll give you guys a minute to find and send me the answer. I have a scarier picture. <laughs> Get it away. Turn no, Nick, just no. Thank you. It's a demo it's a demotivational. It says underneath memorize this. From now on you'll be thinking about this whenever you try and take some toilet paper. Oh no. All right. Send me your answer. See I win. You win. Yes, you definitely win. Did you know that there are allowed to be nine spiders per hundred feet of toilet paper? Yeah. I used to work for James River Toilet Paper Company and you used to count them. Because it was all pulp and the spiders loved it and they would be of course they do. Nine per hundred feet are allowed. <laughs> who did the who had the job of counting the spiders? Yes. You bet someone did. Exactly right. <laughs> one. Two. Oh, wait. This one has 10 spiders. We have to throw that one out. Throw that All right. I'm out. waiting for Nick. Okay. All right. We have a conflict of opinion here between the answers, so we're going to have to take a look at this carefully and see. Um, when you're building a sentence like this and you have um, you know, a dependent clause uh, going on to a main clause, you're going to see uh, kind of a parallel between the structures. So, um, so
So, Colin, who, who is the subject or the primary focus of the first clause, unlike her sister, Heather, who would always put her act in safely outside if she found them in the house? Who's the Which subject? One's the first clause? Say it again. Which one's the first clause? Do you, do the the one, always... unlike her sister, Heather. So then it's, it's Joanne, right? Well, Joanne's the, the yes, yeah, correct for the second clause. Joanne oh, yeah. is the focus. What is the focus for the first clause, Colin? Then it's Heather. Heather, okay. All right, so we're talking about Heather, who always puts her arachnid safely outside. Then, doesn't it make sense that the second clause should focus on Joanne, right? The subject should be Joanne. Is Joanne the subject of the second clause? Which one's the second one, Joanne? Please? Joanne's fear kept her from going. When, that's Joanne. Is Joanne the subject? Did, did no, Joanne fear? fear. fear. Very good. That's the subject. So, um, yeah, that's not a balanced construction, isn't it? So it's it's kind of awkward because in the first clause we're talking about Heather, and in the second one we're talking about fear. So. If you want to make it the best answer, then you're going to balance out those clauses by having both humans as the subject instead of one human and one abstract noun. If that's the case, then, um, Colin, you gave me the right answer. What What is the answer? Joanne was just going to go on her new PC. Very good. Yes. Because in that one, Joanne is the subject just like Heather was the subject of the first call. Um, and so it's balanced and it makes sense. Um, Morgan, does that make sense to you? Yeah. It does? Okay. Nick, anything to add? No. You good? I called it. You did. Good job. Um, all right. They're back to the t terrifying spider, my nightmare. I'm going to be feeling things crawling all over me all night just because of this picture. All right. Oh, I love this word too. Um, capricious. That picture is just creepy. Well, if there's a reason for the creepy picture. It's important that you be creeped out by that picture to understand the word. Um, the word capricious means to just change your mind and act on a whim to Capricorn. however you feel. Say it, say it. Is that connected to Capricorn at all? The whole thing with the goat? Yes, it comes from the Latin word capra, which means goat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think, and I might regret asking this question, maybe I shouldn't. Why do you think that the idea of just acting on a whim is associated with goats? You guys ever been around any goats? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Because <laughs> I'm a country girl. I've been around some critters. I didn't know if you guys were There's one down city slickers. Okay, and how does it act? It's kind of mean, I guess. Yeah. It is mean. Like, it, don't they run into each other and, like, bump their noggins together? Yeah, although the llama is more mean than the goat. Llamas are mean. Um, not only that, but if you can look up here, you'll see in this picture, the creepy picture that's bothering you, you see a uh, satyr right here. You guys know what the satyr is? You might have seen it if you saw any of the, any kind of fantasy film, like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe had a satyr in it. Um, a satyr is half man, half goat, and they were worshipers of Dionysus. Dionysus is the god of... Oh, they don't teach mythology anymore. Dionysus is the god of wine. <laughs> wine and partying. Of wine and partying. And the satyrs follow him, so they drink a lot and they party a lot. So that's why their behavior is capricious, okay? That's why their behavior is capricious. Um, there is another theory of its origin, I think, that we discussed before about it having to do with the uh, hedgehog hair, like your hair standing on end. Um, 
uh, that's one possibility. But I always like to think of it as the ghosts. They're acting like a bunch of crazy wild satyrs running around doing whatever they feel like with no accountability whatsoever. Questions? It's still pretty creepy. That's because satyrs are creepy creatures. <laughs> they are, they're always drinking and wandering around and chasing nymphs and, and passing out and no, doing all the things. All that, just the goat, the bestiality is a bit too far. Uh, um, did you guys see the Percy Jackson movies? Yeah. Percy's best friend is a singer. So they're not all bad. Those books got worse as the time, as the series went on. They did. I liked the first one a lot. It's all right. A great concept. It was. It's a great concept. My students do love it. It's great for kids. All right. Let's take a look at another sentence. In the interior of the Arctic Islands during the melting season, even small streams must be crossed with great care because near zero water temperatures and the typically rocky and capricious nature of spring of stream beds. Read it carefully. Send me your answer. Okay, there's that one was just weird. Thanks, Nick. I have your answer. Thank you, Colin. Morgan. Morgan, you're about to run out of time. Do, 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 do. Nope, time's up. Do, 54 do. seconds of past time to move on to the next one. Oh, there it goes. I am so impressed with all of you because everyone saw it, and I thought this one was so Tricky. Morgan, why did everyone pick B? Um, well, I personally thought it should be, like, there should be something after because. Yes. Yep. Because of. Or because of. Exactly. It, the word, just using the word because by itself is as if you're adding another full clause to the, to the sentence. But this isn't a full clause. There's no verb. Okay. <laughs> The, the near zero water and typically in rocky and capricious nature of stream beds are doing what? They're not doing anything. So, so it can't just be using the word because to, to attach another clause. So yes, you, you could have gone done because of, I like how you went there, Morgan, or due to, D-U-E, T-O, due to near zero water temperatures because of near zero water temperatures. That would make it make sense. I'm really impressed. I thought you guys would... Uh, would miss that one. Comments? Questions? I thought we'd have to talk about this one for a while. All right, we're going to stop right here at Prolific and get ready to take our break. It's 8 o'clock, so come back at 8.05. Thank you much. Colin, 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 Colin. While he is coming back, let's take a look at prolific. There's Colin. Prolific is a word we've seen before. We know it comes from prolace, which means offspring. So, Colin, since you just got back, yeah. what does prolific mean? Um, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know you did this word. You well, like, didn't do this word. It's a review word. Good. Uh, isn't it like make like new? Um, like what? To make like new. Not quite. It is prolife means offspring, and it comes from the word uh, offspring plus the word that means to make. What does it mean? 
to make offspring. Yeah, to make lots of offspring. We have uh, at my new school. I have one uh, family that has eight children in the school. That's prolific family, but it doesn't have to be prolific just in talking about physical children. It can be kind of mental uh, ch children as well, such as writing books, songs, creating movies, and so forth. We saw that back here with, where was it? Oh, I was trying to go back and find it. Where it talked about uh, the guy who was prolific in his musical career, although his writings overshadowed it. It just means to make a lot of something, to produce a lot of something. Children, books, movies, songs, whatever. Questions? Okay, goody, goody. Acrid, acrid, from the Latin word acre, acris, acre. I just taught this one to my Latin two students on uh, Friday, which means bitter or sharp. So, um, Morgan, what is something that is acrid, that has a bitter taste or smell, maybe even uh, burns your eyes a little bit? What's something that's acrid? Morgan. Can you hear me, Morgan? I'm with you back. Oh, I can't hear anybody now. What happened? That's probably not good. Can you hear Give me? Give me one of these if you can hear me talking. Okay, Colin can hear me talking. Morgan can hear me talking. Nick, can you hear me talking? Okay. I can't hear any of you. Um, Nick, speak. Speak. Mm -mm. Hello? I can't hear Nick. Colin, speak. Hello. Hi. Nothing. I'm trying to see if I can adjust. Ah, try again? Hello? There we go. Now I can hear you. I don't know what happened. All right, uh, Morgan, what's something that's acrid? Uh, well, like you said, like, burn your eyes. Yeah, it can and, burn like, your well, eyes. And, like, onions. Onions, perfect example. Um, Nick, what's something that's acrid that is a bitter taste or smell? It's sharp. It's kind of offensive a little bit. Acrid? What's something that's acrid? Rotten eggs. Rotten eggs, oh, absolutely. Colin, something that's acrid? Uh, trash. Yes. Um, I also think of, like, smoke from the campfire. I don't know how it is with you guys. Whenever I go camping or I'm around a campfire, the smoke always comes right to my face. And when I move to the other side, it comes right to my face. And that acrid smoke just burns your eyes and your nose and your mouth is just nasty. So, um, yes, acrid means having a bitter, sharp smell, something that's offensive, really. Um, it said that uh, acreous is also a correct form, but you almost never see it. The form you're going to see is acrid. All right, let's take a look. All right. Well, one of our favorites, the two blanks. Scientists are studying the birth and growth of thunderstorms to discover what causes. I keep getting this almost hiccup that keeps interrupting my talking. So if you wonder why I keep talking a little gas, you'll know. Scientists are studying the birth and growth of thunderstorms to discover what causes the difference between showers that enable crops to blank and blank storms that cause floods and erosion. Give you guys a minute to send me your answer. We're going to have to make a little correction now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> a word was left out, Nick. You want to tell us what it is? Or something was left out? Because you see uh, it too, don't you? Yeah, like the cum or something yeah. like that. Very good, because we're expecting 
a verb, right? Enable crops to something. We're expecting an infinitive. And the correct answer is not a verb. So, yeah, I like the word become or to be. Why did you send me cheese? I did not send you cheese. Yeah, you did. Oh, no, that's from Miss Ann. Okay. I don't know why she sent me that. Okay. So once I let you know that we need to, that there's a little error in the sentence, so we need to add a verb to the first one because prolific is not a verb. So we need to add something like to become prolific, to be prolific, and that, then send me your answer. Morgan, I'm waiting for yours. Yeah, Colin, now that he's seen that, has changed. Kind of gave it away with that correction. Um, yeah, the, the leaving out that verb form made it confusing because what we're trying to say is that the showers cause the, the crops to grow, cause them to produce, to be productive, to flourish to be prolific, to produce lots and lots of grain, right? Um, and that's supposed to be opposed because we see that word difference. So we know that the second thing is going to oppose that. And so it's going to be the opposite of being prolific or flourishing. And so you, um, you guys were right when you said that the answer was A. Um, showers that enable crops to be prolific are different from violent storms that cause floods and erosion. That's the difference. The difference. Sorry about that little one. A difference. One little left out word makes in being able to find the answer. Um, Morgan, do you have a question? You had chosen a different answer. You don't. She's gone. She disappeared. Yeah. I missed that. Happens. Okay. All right. Let's then. You guys got it. Let's move on. Ah, okay. I'm going to have to defer to Miss Ann at this point as to how to access the awesomeness that is the crossword puzzle. Just cut and paste that um, uh, link to the internet, and it'll bring up our crossword puzzle. Okay. All right, let's see if we can do that. You might have to type it in. I'm having trouble cutting and pasting. All right, that's okay. We can type. We're smart. We can figure it out. Browser. Type that in. I'll type it. All right. Now, what you're typing in is the Latin root, the Latin root, not the English derivative, correct? Yeah. Making sure we know, because we try to type in those English words, and it's just going to be a mess. Wait, am I supposed to be able to read this? Can you not, not read it? Um, for me, was I, did you want me to type in the link myself? Cause for me, um, I just see it like at a distance, like the way it always was with the link below. Okay. I just sent the link in um, chat to everyone. So go ahead and try clicking on that and seeing if that works. All right. It's coming up. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. There's yeah, a that's a lot. Going to give you a few minutes to work on this one. This one's going to take a little bit of time. I wish I had a musical interlude. Oh, this is annoying. The stupid, um, the list of um, across and downs is covering up most of the actual um, 
It scrolls, though. Put your mouse over. Do you have a, uh, I have a scroll wheel on my mouse. When I point it at the crossword puzzle and scroll up and down, it moves. Yeah, but at the same time, I'd like to be able to see the whole crossword puzzle, not the... Well, then maximize your thing and deal with life. It's the hardest thing in the world, I know. Uh, this is what I tell my students all the time. It's frustrating. We live in an imperfect world. Crossword puzzles don't work. Here, let me see if I can um, share my desktop and show you what it looks like. Hmm. There we go. And we can go over a few of them. Because sometimes it helps if you just get the first couple done. You see how I can scroll up and down? So, um, Nick, what's one, what's one down, the Latin word for moon? Is that Luna? It is. Luna. The word lunatic comes from it. Okay. Okay, how about now that we have an A at the beginning of four, let's do four across. What is the Latin word for water, Colin? Aqua. You got it. A Q oops, A Q U A. Right now we've got A in the middle of three down. What's the Latin word for C? The marine, maritime, submarine, mariner comes from Colin. I'll go back to you. Mar. M A R. Yeah. You see now it's getting a lot easier. Three across. Small, less, mini, minute, minor, minus, minimize, Nick. Min. Min. Two down, Nick. Health. <laughs> Latin word for health. Sanitary. Sanitary and sane. Insanity comes from it. Sam. Yes. It looks like it's going to be awful, but once we get into it, it's not that bad. We know stuff. All right, five across, to scrape, to scrape, Colin? Mass. Yeah, R-A-S. Six down here. Audience, auditorium, audiovisual, audible. Uh, Colin? Colin. Yep, absolutely. Seven across. Kyle, Nick, row. Ord. Order. Ord, very good. I'm just taking these out of the beginning of the words, and it's working. It, isn't it funny how that happens? Very good. The roots are being, we're pulling out the stem of the word that's being used as the, the base of the word. Um, all right. Which one you want to do now? Ten down. Ten down. Self. Nick. Auto. Auto. Okay, Colin, which one do you want to do? No, I don't care. You don't care? That's my favorite thing. Let's do 16 across. Carry. <coughs> Portable what? transport, yes, of course. Okay, 16 down. Father, paternity, paternal patriarch. Nick? Which one? Uh, 16 down. Father, paternity, paternal patriarch. P A T? Okay. Yes, except it's. P A T E R is the full Latin word for father. But yeah, P A T would be the root form. Sometimes there's an R in there too. Patrician, um, patriarch, so forth. Cool. I couldn't find the square for it, so I didn't know how many letters I was looking for. Ah, very good. Yeah, there it is. How about 17 down to rule or reign or to guide, Nick? 
for Regal, Reign, Regulate, Regime, Regent. 17 down. 17 down. Um, R-E-G. R-E-G. All right, Nick. Oh, not Nick. I was about to say, Nick, it's back to you, but it's Colin, it's back to you. <laughs> 21 across. Shape. From Uniform, Transform, Reform. Form. F-O-R-M, you got it. 18 down, uh, no, 18 across. Colin, high, altitude, altimeter. Out. Out, yes. All right, Nick. 22 across. War. Bellicose, belligerent. Antebellum, rebellion. Bella or Bella? You're not sure whether it would be Bella or Bello or whatever? Well, then let's go to 14 down and plug it in and get it to work. 14 down. Um, Nick, shout. Proclaim, exclaim, acclaim, clamor. Um, proc. I have no. Oh, claim? Oops. Yeah, we have a little problem with our, our. Here, let me see something. I has a problem. I'm trying to fix it. We have been through a lot of these. I know, right? Aha, claim. Is it claim? It is claim. Yeah, no. like claim. I had to go and look at the answer to make sure I was doing it right because I was trying to put the Latin word clamo in its claim. I was trying to put an M there and it didn't make sense. The Latin is ruining my spelling. No. It's the opposite of what's supposed to happen. 25 across, Colin, sir. Minister, administer, min administration. Minister? Yeah. Minist? Oh. Uh. <laughs> down, Colin. Break, erupt, interrupt, abrupt, rupture, bankrupt. Yep. Yeah, you got it. 24 across. Nick! Fold. Complex, duplex, plexiglass, perplex. Oh, I said it before you put it in there. Nick, what is it? Which one? Number 24 across, fold, complex, duplex, plex, glass. Plex? Yes. 15 down, Colin. Bend. Flexible. Reflex. Flex. Inflexible. Yeah, flex. 20 across, Colin. Light. Move. Loom. Lumen, illuminate, luminescent, luminous. All right. <clears throat> Nine down. Nick, join. Juncture, conjunction. Um. Okay, it's junked. Yeah. That sounds bad, but it is. Junction, yeah. 14 across, Colin! To lean, incline, recline, decline, inclination. Um. Yeah. See, this is, oops, helps if you type. Can you type, Shannon? There you go. Um, 26 down, Nick, climb, ascend, descend, descendant, transcend. Send. Yeah, but with a C. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Like three down? Three down? Oh, that's great, right? Yeah. Three was Mar, right? No, I know, I'm in 23. Uh, 23. Where's 23? I'm blind as a bat. This is what happens when you get old. 23 down? Hole. 
Integrate, integ integral, integrity, integer. Well, since you wanted that one, Nick, what is it? Great. No, because look, the N is in the middle of 23 down from minutes. Integer. Integrate. Integrity. Integ? Yeah. 34 cross, Colin! Break. Fragments. Fragile. Fine. Mm -hmm. yes. 35 down, Colin. You did such a good job. Light, spirit, animate, animus. Our um, animal. Yes. Um, and animal. 34 um, cross. Nick, beginning. Initial, initiate, initiative. Okay, I keep losing you because you go to which one? 39 across, my dear. No. Um. In it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. 39 down. Likeness. Likeness. The word is. The derivatives are image, imagine, imagery. Um, Colin? No. Yeah. 41 across. Colin, pick that one up too. Ship, navy, naval, no. navigate. Yeah. We're killing it. 36 across, Nick. The word no. No. Nag. Nag. 29 down, Nick. Urge. Compulsory. Hug. Expulsion. Compulsion. Hug. What? Wait, 39 down? 29 oh. down. 29 down. I apologize, my dear. No, 29 across. I cannot read. <laughs> P U L. Urge, the, the 29 across is urge, compulsory, expulsion, compulsion, repulse, P U L. There you go. You're not doing these in order, so I keep getting lost. I'm sorry. I just pick one at random. Okay, so, so set me straight, Nick. What one should we do next so I don't do them out of order? Um, I don't do crossword puzzles in order. I go around until I find one I know, and then I fill all those in and then go back and fill in the blanks. Let's do um let's do twenty nine down then I guess. Twenty nine down. All right, Colin. Fight. Pugnacious, pugilist, repugnant. Pug? Yeah, pug. Like the dog. Then we would do thirty down, Nick, if we're following your rules. All right, sure. Play. Ludicrous. Interlude. Elude. Lude. Lude. Okay. Now, at this point, do we continue with going down? So I, would I go to 31 down or 32 down now? Or do we go across, Nick, according to your strategy? Yeah, we can do whatever you want, actually. Okay, 32 down. Being linear. Back. Retroactive is a derivative. How about that one, Colin? Retro. Retro, yeah. And while we're there, let's also do 33 down. All right, I'm done. Done with the whole thing? Yeah. You're killing me. Colin, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm still still working on this thing. <laughs> I know you're just going by it. Okay. Well, yeah. I, have a, I have a solution. I have a solution. I have a solution. So it is time for us to go. Practice this. Review this. You have the link. Come back to it later. But let me stop my share. Go back to our document. And the answers are all right there. Don't look at them yet. But if you need to, at the end of the PowerPoint, there are the answers. I answered all the ones you asked me to answer, but at the same time, I was trying to get them all done so I'd be able to answer whichever one you are. asked. That was clever. That was good. Um, you know what? I'm impressed, you guys. That's an awful lot of roots. That's a ridiculous number of roots. You should definitely high-five yourself, for real. 
Um, okay, so Anne, did you want to talk um, about anything before we go? Or Pat? I guess, Anne, we should speak a little bit of... Everyone to finish the crossword because those are the 42 routes that uh, we don't cover that are too easy to cover in class. So if you want to know all the routes that are going to be on the set, you really need to go through all of them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Remember, Nick, there, Nick and Colin, there were 160, and we've, we've covered 120 in the in the 18 lessons. These are the remaining 40 some odd routes that Anne uh, has <clears throat> has put forth to you, so that you can have have the easy ones in front of you as well. So, so you should revisit these in this crossword puzzle, and that, and, and that'll get you there. Um, and a, you want, a great thing to do, a great way to review this would be to come back and look at the crossword puzzle and look at each of the roots and try to think of derivatives that come from that root. So if you come and you see, you know, flex, then try to think of as many derivatives as you can think of that come from flex. Um, how as many as you can think of that come from fract or frag or port. That will help you to kind of com uh, commit those into your mind if you link them with the English group. Sorry, Pat, for interrupting. No, that's perfect. Okay, so, um, just, so just to let you know next week's schedule, gentlemen, and, and um, I think you saw it in the email that I sent to you. Uh, we have class Tuesday evening, okay, because you only have a couple of days left till next Saturday. So we have a Tuesday evening class. We have a Wednesday class that is... And is it an official time test? That's what you, we're going to give them, an official time test? Yes. Yeah. And on Thursday, we will have a review day. So based upon the official time test, we'll be able to evaluate those roots and those words where you may need us to um, go over them with you one more time. So you'll be you'll have an, an opportunity to go over the ones that you may, may be having difficulty with. So, okay, guys, any questions for us? Mm -hmm. Go okay, over you... all these roots. That's your homework. Go over all of the ones in the crossword. I might, uh, I might quiz you on Tuesday. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys on Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel.